The Seal Book. Once again, the keeper of the book has opened the ponderous door to the secret vault, wherein is kept the great sealed book, in which is recorded all the secrets and mysteries of mankind through the ages. Here are tales of every kind, tales of murder, of madness, of dark deeds, strange and terrible beyond all belief. Keeper of the book, I would know what tale we tell this time. Open the great book and let us read. Slowly, the great book opens. One by one, the keeper of the book turns the pages and stops. Ah, the strange story of a scoundrel who swindled the innocent, only to find that all his wealth could not protect him from justice. A tale titled, Murderer Unknown. Here is the tale, Murderer Unknown, as it is written in the pages of the sealed book. Our story begins as Martin Scott enters the large and luxurious offices of Gerald Morgan. Scott, his face white and tense, is talking to Morgan's private secretary. But Jason, I tell you, you've got to let me see him. I'm sorry, Mr. Scott, but Mr. Morgan can't be disturbed. But it's a matter of life and death, man. You What's can't... What's all the noise out here about? Oh, Gerald. Oh, it's you, Martin. Gerald, you've got to see me. It's something that concerns both of us. Concerns both of us? You forget you're no longer a partner in this firm. In spite of that, it concerns the two of us. All right, come into my office. You too, Jason. Yes, Mr. Morgan. Well, what is it, Martin? Yesterday morning, I received this letter in the mail. As it had a black border, I naturally thought it was just a death announcement. But when I opened it... Here... Read it for yourself. Hmm. You'll die first, Martin Scott. Then Gerald Morgan will die. There's no escape. Well, what about it? Obviously, it's the work of a crank. Yes. That's what I thought after I'd read it. But late last night, someone took a shot at me as I was approaching my home. As you can see by this bullet hole in my hat, I had a rather close shave. Someone took a shot at you. But who? You must remember, Gerald that when you took this company away from me, you also ruined almost a hundred stockholders. My gaining control of this company was entirely within the law. Well, from what happened last night, it seems obvious one of the stockholders doesn't agree. Whether we like it or not, we have to combine against this threat. Then exactly what do you propose? This morning, I hired a private detective, Philip Walker, to investigate. He wanted $200 for his fee, but I only had a hundred. And seeing that I'm a party of the second part in this threatening letter, you think it only fair I pay the other half of Mr. Walker's fee? Yes. Uh, that's reasonable enough. I'll send you a check for a hundred dollars. Thank you. I'll keep in touch with you, Gerald. Yes, do. Goodbye, Martin. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jason. Goodbye, Mr. Scott. <laughs> well, Jason, you heard Mr. Scott's story. What do you think? Uh, Mr. Scott uh, is a poor liar. Exactly, Jason. (laughs) I'm very curious to know what Martin's next move in this little game will be. What was the name of that private detective he said he hired? Uh, Philip Walker. Ah, yes, Philip Walker. Have him call on me as soon as possible, Jason. There are a few things I'd like to discuss with Mr. Walker. A few 
days later, Martin Scott, a terrified look on his face, rushed into Gerald Morgan's office. Gerald, I've got to talk to you. Now we mustn't get excited, oh, Martin. Please. Four days have passed and I see you're still alive. Gerald, I've received another letter. It says I'm to die tonight at midnight. Look. Hmm, so it does. Too bad, Martin. Looks as though I'll have to pay for your funeral after all. Uh, Jason, you'd better make arrangements. Don't joke, Gerald. If he kills me, you'll be next. Hmm, what do you suggest? I, I want to leave town. Go far away. Oh. Hmm. And of course, you want me to lend you the money. Oh, I, I know I haven't any prospects now, Gerald, but I'll pay you back somehow. All I want is $5,000. It's nothing to you, but to me, it's the difference between living and dying. <laughs> Really, Martin, you give me credit for very little intelligence. What do you mean? <laughs> Come, Martin, why don't you admit you put the bullet through your hat yourself and wrote those letters all in an effort to get money out of me? You don't believe me? No, Martin, I don't believe you. For the past three days, every move you've made has been reported to me by Mr. Walker. Philip Walker? Yes, Martin, the detective you hired. It was a simple matter to buy his services away from you. As usual, it was just a question of money. But, Gerald, you've got to... In last night's report, Walker states that you left home at 9.25 to mail a letter. That letter you mailed couldn't by any chance be the death threat which you received this morning, could it? Gerald, don't be a fool! I tell you, someone's out to murder both of us! Well, I shall begin worrying when you've been killed. And rest assured that if anything happens to you tonight, I'll see to it you get a decent burial. <laughs> Someone's at the door. What? Who, who could let me at this hour? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> oh, all right. If you won't answer it, I will. Although I, you don't think Oh, shut care. up. I'll come with you. Does that idiot think we're deaf? <laughs> shut up, you fool. Oh, his face is it's covered with blood. Who is he? I don't know. Gerald. Gerald. <laughs> Martin. Hold the door open while I carry him in. All right, Jeff. He's almost unconscious. Loss of blood. Yeah. Easy now. That's it. Oh, no use. Charlie. Oh, his face looks as though it had been splashed a dozen times. He's horribly mutilated. Gerald, what's he clutching in his hand? It's a letter. With a black border. What's it say? Can you make it out? difficult to read with the blood on it. It says, this is the last letter you'll ever receive, Scott. Your time has come. Oh, Gerald, what does it mean? Oh, stop asking so many questions and call Dr. Richards. Oh, all right. Martin, Martin, can you hear me? Gerald, at midnight, he came for me. Who, Martin, who? I, I, I never had a chance. Tell me, Martin, who did this to you? He said... After I died, you would be next. But who, Martin, who? <laughs> oh. Dr. Richards will be right over, Gerald. It's too late. He's dead.
And now to continue the story, Murderer Unknown, as it is written in the sealed book. As Gerald Morgan drove to his office the morning following Martin Scott's death, he kept glancing over his shoulder nervously. A cold fear gripped him until he entered his office. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Good morning, Jason. I read in the morning papers what happened to Mr. Scott. It came as uh, quite a shock. Yes, I'm afraid I did Martin a grave injustice not believing his story. Oh, I look at the way he tried to warn me after he'd been mortally wounded. He, um, he wasn't able to name his assailant, was he? Unfortunately, no. He died just as he was about to name him. Hmm, that's too bad. Yes, now I'm next. Well, whoever m- m- murdered he isn't going to succeed in my case. I'm sure he won't. Uh, Mr. Walker is waiting to see you. I'll have him come in. Yes, Mr. Morgan, we'll see you now, Mr. Walker. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Good morning, Walker. Have a seat. Thank you. I read about what happened at your home last night. It's too bad you removed me from the case yesterday afternoon. What do you make of it, Walker? The manner in which Scott was so brutally murdered seems to suggest that the murderer is a maniac. And maniacs are dangerous, Mr. Morgan. If you're looking for a fat fee, you'll get it without trying to frighten me into it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Morgan. I didn't mean... Never mind. Your one job is to catch the man who murdered Martin Scott and is out to get me. Yes, sir. Scott believed that one of the former stockholders of this company was after him. Now, now I'm of the same opinion. Yes, Mr. Morgan. Yeah. Here's a list of the stockholders. Hire as many assistants as you need. Spare no expense, but find Scott's murderer. We'll do our best, Mr. Morgan. Meanwhile, I'd better arrange a bodyguard Uh, for you. Pardon me, Mr. Morgan, but perhaps a trip somewhere might be wiser. Yes. Quite right, Jason. Even with a bodyguard, a man can be murdered. I think the idea of a trip, a long one, is an excellent suggestion. Well, where do you intend to go, Mr. Morgan? That I'm not telling anyone, not even you, Walker. But how will I get in touch with you if something comes up? Merely in certain notice on the personal column of the morning record. I'll get in touch with you, if I think it's important. Very well, Mr. Morgan. Jason, call my home and have my wife pack her things and mine. Tell her we're leaving town immediately. <laughs> Now that we're well on our way, I feel much safer. This trip was an excellent suggestion, Jason. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Morgan, but you haven't given me my course yet. I'm still flying due west. Oh, yes. Yeah. Here's a map with our destination on it, Jason. We're flying to a small lodge in the north woods. There's a small clearing nearby where you'll be able to land. Yes, Mr. Morgan. You'll find it an ideal vacation spot. There will be perfect safety for Walker to catch Scott's murderer. Good morning, Mrs. Morgan, Mr. Morgan. Uh, Good morning. Did you, did you sleep well? Perfectly, thank you. Two weeks here has made me feel like a new man. Ah, wonderful air. Yes, it is. Uh, I have here a copy of the morning record. Is there a message from Walker in the personal column? Yes, sir. The message reads, Nothing found as yet, but I'm working hard. I see. Well, couldn't expect him to uncover the murderer in two weeks. No, sir. After all, there are over a hundred stockholders, and any one of them might be guilty. Good morning, madam. Uh, Gentlemen, a wonderful day for fishing, no? Yes, it is. What have you got there, Pierre? Oh, just a few supplies, madam. Oh, yes, yes, a letter for your husband. A letter? Uh, Oui. Uh, My brother Jacques, who runs the general store and who is also postmaster, he uh, gave it to me. But no one knows I'm here. No one. But uh, it is addressed to you, Mr. Jones. Here, you can see for yourself. Is there any return address on it, Mr. Morgan? No, it's addressed to Mr. Jones, care of Postmaster St. Clair. Letter's postmarked from Portland yesterday. Only one way to find out if this letter is meant for me. Why, another letter inside it. A black border. What? And it's addressed to Gerald Morgan. No matter where you flee, I shall follow. There's no escape. A few minutes later, after a few bags had been hastily packed, a plane took off from a small clearing in the woods. Hour after hour, it flew due southwest, 
And when the fuel was almost gone, it landed near a small village in Indiana. And Gerald and his wife went to the only hotel in the village. Oh, Gerald, it was dreadful enough flying a thousand miles in eight hours, but it, it, it's too much to expect me to stay at a miserable inn like this. Just look at this room. Gabe, if you value that lovely white neck of yours, you'll do exactly as I say. We're staying at this inn because it's secluded and safe. Who is it? It's Jason. Oh, just a minute. Come in, Jason. Did you get rid of the plane and send the telegram to Walker? Yes, I did. What did you say in the telegram? Well, I told him that the murderer had been in Portland yesterday, and that he was to fly there and make every effort to apprehend him. Good. Walker's no fool. He'll have his men in every hotel, station, and bus terminal in Portland. They have photographs of all the stockholders, and sooner or later they'll catch up with the guilty man. Yes, but suppose he's already left Portland. Walker will still find him. Now stop talking about it. We're perfectly safe here. All we have to do is wait. Jason, where's Gerald? He uh, just went down to the bar to see if the morning record has arrived yet. Jason. Yes, dear? Are you the one who's sending him those letters? Why, darling, what a question to ask the man you love. Oh, I'm sorry, Jason. I... I don't care what you do, only, only promise Be me... Be careful, you... someone's coming. Uh, Mr. Morgan, I see you were able to get a copy of the morning record. Uh, anything in it from Walker? Yes, but it's all bad. They weren't able to find the murderer in Portland. Uh, that's too bad. I told him to spare no expense, and he let the murderer slip through his fingers. Ah, oh, the fools. I'll answer it, sir. This letter came from Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Another letter? Yes, uh, it was posted... Last night from Toledo. But how could he have known we were here? We left no trail. Should I open it? Yes. Well, there's another envelope within it. The black border. Yes, it's addressed to you. Open it. See what he says. No matter where you flee, you can't escape me. Your time is drawing near. <coughs> And now to continue our story, as it is written in the sealed book. Less than ten minutes after receiving the black-bordered letter, Gerald Morgan was fleeing for his life. Hour after hour, he raced his car through the Indiana countryside, stopping only for gas. He drove recklessly with fear in his eyes. Oh, Gerald, must you drive so fast? Several times we've almost had an accident. Be quiet. I'm stopping in the next garage. We're going to leave the car there. Uh, leave the car? Yes. I'm not taking any chances of his tracing us through the license plates. But, Gerald, where are we? We're on the outskirts of Chicago. Now, Jason, we've got to be clever. We're separating. You ought to go to the Westview Hotel and take a suite for yourself under an assumed name. Do you understand? Perfectly. Mrs. Morgan and I will slip into the suite after you've engaged it, with no one the wiser. And, by the way, send a telegram to Walker and notify him that the murderer was in Toledo last night. And this time he must be caught. <laughs> That 
must be Jason. Yes, I'll let him in. Were you able to get a copy of the morning record, Jason? Yes, I was. Give it to me. Uh, let me see. Ah, here we are. No success in Toledo. We'll continue search. Oh, the fools. Another opportunity to catch him lost. How long do they think I can go on this way? I'm sure you can depend on Walker. Gerald, why don't you go and lie down for a little while? I'm perfectly all right. But you look tired. Uh, a little rest would do you good. Oh, yes, I suppose it would. Call me if there's any word from Walker. Jason, come over to the window where he won't be able to hear us. What's the matter, Eve? You look so upset. Well, you saw the way he acted, Jason. He's losing his nerve, going to pieces. And when Gerald's frightened, he becomes violent, almost a maniac. What are you trying to say? Jason, you've got to stop sending him those letters. I, I tell you, it's dangerous. So, you really think I'm the one who's sending those letters to who him, Who else huh? could it be? You, yes, you... Jason. Who? Gerald! Mr. Morgan, what are you doing with that gun? You haven't answered my wife's question, Jason. I tell you, I, I know absolutely nothing, nothing about those letters. Really? Perhaps you haven't noticed, but that another one just been slipped under our door. Oh, no, no. Yes, my dear. We'll see what this one says. Uh, as usual, there's another envelope inside it, and with a black border. Oh, Gerald, please don't open it. Don't, I can't stand it. Come, dear. It's only fair that I should know what it says as well as Jason. Hmm. No matter where you flee, I'll find you. When the clock strikes midnight, you die. <laughs> So, you two had decided to get rid of me tonight. No, Gerald, no. I tell you, I had nothing to do with the sending of those letters. Really, Jason. In all our travels, we left no trail behind. You two were the only ones who knew where I was. You must listen to me. I tell you, I had nothing to do with them. You're nothing. exceedingly clever, Jason. I've never denied that. With me out of the way, you could gain control of my company. Your accusation is absurd. If that's true, why should I have killed Martin Scott? He had nothing to do with the company anymore. Quite so, but with me dead, he might have gained control of the company instead of you. Therefore, you decided to remove the two of us. You've gambled, Jason, and lost. Gerald, why are you turning on the radio? We're parting company, my dear, and I feel the need of music. No, no, you can't shoot me. I, I tell you, I'm innocent. Gerald, I had nothing to do with this scheme. I, I swear I didn't. You wouldn't want the man you love to die alone, would you, my you dear? You must listen to me, you must. I can prove I had no part in it if you'll only give me a chance. No, no. Oh, uh. You were both very clever, but you were dealing with Gerald Morgan. And you sent your last threatening letter. Uh, I've got to get out of here. The gun, I'll wipe my fingerprints off it and place it in Jason's hand. Perhaps the police will think it's a double suicide. If not, they still can't prove anything against me. No one saw me come to the hotel. No one even knows I'm in Chicago. I'll return home and get someone to act as my alibi. The police will never know. Who's that? Open up. It's the police. <laughs> I'm afraid you can only have a few minutes, Mr. Walker. Thank you. Walker. What are you doing here? I've come to deliver a letter. A letter? Yes. Here. Mm -hmm. What? Well, it's from Martin Scott, dated December 5th. Well, that was the night he was murdered. Yes. Dear Gerald, a week ago, my physician told me I had but a few months to live. After I once got over the shock... I suddenly felt free to do what a hundred ruined stockholders wanted to do, but, but couldn't. couldn't. I could easily have come to your office and killed you, Gerald, but I didn't want you to die so easily. Knowing you as well as I do, I began to plan your future for you. My plan began the day I came to your office with a death threat and the hat with a bullet hole in it. You reacted just as I knew you would. You bribed the detective I'd hired when I appeared at your office this morning and showed you the second letter I'd received, saying I died tonight at midnight. You laughed at me for trying to extort money from you. That, too, I had planned on. In one hour, it will be midnight, and according to my plan for you, I must be murdered. I am going to slash myself with a knife, Gerald, and then go to your home to die. You're going to watch me die, Gerald. And no fear as you've never known it before. 
After I'm gone, you will begin to receive the same kind of threatening letters which I sent myself. You will run away, Gerald. But wherever you go, a letter will find you. You'll become insanely frightened. And in time, you'll turn on the only person who could be logically betraying your movements, Jason. If things work out as I planned, the great fear in you will drive you to kill him. When you're in prison, waiting for the end, you'll receive this letter. And at last know which one of the stockholders made you pay for your crimes. Martin Scott. No, no, it can't be. But it is, Mr. Morgan. But if Jason didn't send me those letters, who did? You forget, Mr. Morgan, that I know where to find you. You had Jason send me telegrams, and they were easy to trace. Then, then it was you who sent those letters? Yes, I was the one who carried out Martin Scott's plan. But I bought you, gave you thousands of dollars. All of your checks were torn up. Martin Scott was my friend. You can't do this to me. You can save me if you want to. I'm rich. I'll pay you any amount of money you want. Walker, listen to me. You'll have to leave now, Mr. Walker. It's almost... No, midnight. Walker. You can't. You can't let them kill me. I'll pay you anything. Anything. Walker! And so ends the tale. Murderer unknown. As it is written in the sealed book. At midnight, Gerald Morgan was executed in the electric chair. Twisted indeed are the strands of fate in which destiny entangles mere mortals. And now, Keeper of the Book, before you close the great volume, show us the tale we tell next time. This one. Ah, yes. The tale of a human derelict who one night stumbled into a pawn shop and there sold five years of his life to a strange and mysterious pawnbroker. The tale is called Time on My Hands. Be sure to be with us again next time when the sound of the great gong heralds another strange and exciting tale from The Sealed Book. The Sealed Book, produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is written by Bob Arthur and David Cogan.